We are back with another episode of Toast to Life podcast. You know, we're we're ready to go and we got the one and only Picasso, bro. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell them your full name for the people that don't know your full name. Wow. Though. My name is Ismael, but better known as Mayo. Mm. You want me to say my whole name, bro? They're going to yeah. look me up and find me everywhere right now. They're going to look up my credit score. <laughs> <laughs> What's your credit score? Can we ask I don't that? Wanna, uh, my credit score. I signed up to a timeshare right now, and that's just messing up my credit score, dog. I don't. They got you in Cabo? They got me in Las Vegas oh, for a no. free breakfast. Wow, and a hundred dollar gift card, but it wasn't really a hundred dollars for me because he included it in the payment. Oh Jesus! You know? So you are a show barber. You are a luxury barber that not a lot of people can get booked because you're booked like three months ahead. Damn. Right? Yeah. Right now with holidays, your books are like almost closed, bro. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty packed up, but. It's funny that you mention it because I didn't even know that. Because you guys are the ones looking at my schedule. I'm not. I go home and I just wake up and I'm just like, I got this. I got that. This is my agenda for the day. We're li- I was literally just mentioning it because the one that put me on was Jose Vasquez. Shameless plug, right, Jose? <laughs> put me on with this guy. But uh, I look at your grind. And we just talked about this on Friday when you gave me a, a haircut. Is You wake up no matter what early in the morning to start cutting until whenever your last client is so how did how did how do you go about that like what bro how do you how are you on like life crack cocaine bro for real that's always the question bro a lot of people always wonder like damn for are you doing anything <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like what what are you taking pre-workout or something yeah. a little more than pre-workout yeah because you're up literally honestly early, i don't bro. know we all have different types of motivation there's different things that motivate different people obviously but To me, it's just, I don't know. I got my numbers in my head and I know where I, what I want to reach. And then my biggest motivation is my kids. And that's, that's really like, we only have 24 hours. And I feel like within those 24 hours, we already have a system that was in place for us to do certain things. And the reason I say that was because since I started barbering in barber school, I used to work till 3 a.m. before when I became a barber, when I was becoming a barber. And the reason I was doing it till 3 a.m. at times and going from house to house is because I really wanted to learn. I just, I like to get things out of the way. Yeah, for sure. You get me? So I just felt like I just like to get things done. And um, when when I realized that time was an issue was because we have nine and fives for a reason. Correct. And the reason I realized that when I was working till 3 a.m., I had no time to wash my clothes, dog. (laughs) or to eat or have dinner with my family like a normal human being and then that's when i stepped back and i said damn the government figured it out for us nine to five so that you could go home by six and then have dinner by seven and then wash your clothes by eight yeah and then whatever else you got to do fix the plumbing in your house by nine go back to sleep shower and then you know the rest of it just because we talked about it but you've had barber barber shops open from at a young age yeah. How old were you when you opened your first barbershop, bro? I was 20. Jesus yeah. fuck. <laughs> I was 20. That's where my 20s went. <laughs> so you yeah. opened your first one at 20 and your second one at? Probably 22. Damn. 21, 22. Yeah. And then did you open another one during no, almost at the around my, the same time? Uh, third one was um, in 2016. I don't know how old it was. I. <laughs> I was, Can we ask your age? My age? Yeah. How old do you think I am? 21. <laughs> Damn, I know. I, I have that like young look. I'm actually 31. 31. Yeah. So you had a business about 11 years ago starting. Yeah. Second one, just literally a year, two years later. Yeah. And then your third one. Your third one. So how did you, bro, how, so third. you said you lost your 20s. Those, those are where your 20s went. Why is that? Or like, how did that come about? What made you say, fuck it, I'm opening a barbershop? Because I wasn't good at anything. (laughs) You feel me? Like, as soon as I wasn't good at school, I wasn't good at nothing. Honestly, 
sometimes you could look at people and, and they might not be doing nothing with their lives. Yeah. But none of us ever think about like reaching out to them, you know? Facts. So we could just judge someone off their career and be like, oh, this guy is this way. But we never question like, why is he this way? Facts. I'm not speaking about me. I'm just saying in general, so, in yeah, general yeah. someone else. But with me, I feel like I could have been that guy yeah. that was not going to do anything with this life. Facts. But I did something about it. Yeah. And I stepped out and I became a doer. Because I wasn't good at anything. And I, I also feel like there's different learners, and I see that now with my kids. And I say that because when I was younger, I guess it was an expectation that the school system had for you. That oh, was just they, like, do I think this, they, do that. I think and they fuck like, you. And because I was like the quiet you. one, it was like, hey, push this fool aside because this fool doesn't want to learn. He's weird. They didn't, yeah, they, they didn't know that I did want to learn. I just didn't know how to express myself. And uh. Being, growing up quiet kind of like threw a lot of problems at me. I, but now as an adult, now it's a problem that I could solve. You get me? So I did ooh. something about it, which I solved Damn. it and I became a doer. I, I jumped. Yeah. You get me? And, and yeah, I went through a lot more by jumping to the fire. I got burnt. And there was a lot of times where you feel like down and you're just like, damn, how do I get back up? But did you stop? I didn't stop. And that's the key, not stopping. So we we just talked about this the other day because we talked about uh, you're able right now to drive a high end fucking E class Mercedes if you wanted to BMW any luxury car if you really wanted to, but you choose not to. Yep, it's about investing. It is. It's about you know trying to make better choices. Not that anybody else that owns any does not deserve that car or anything else or that they're making a bad choice, but. Yeah. I just feel like in my position, I would not make that choice because I know where I want to be. Facts. You know? Because you, for the people that, if you know already, you know where he's located. But if you don't know, you are in three different locations. <laughs> yeah, I'm in three different locations. And some people think that's crazy. Some people thought two locations I think that's crazy. crazy. I think you're crazy. I don't know. I like to do things that I wouldn't do. <laughs> I am like the opposite of myself or of anybody else. If that like, makes sense to anybody. Exactly. But, so elaborate on that. Like, what do you mean you're the opposite of you? So, for example, like I said, I grew up quiet. And I feel like naturally when someone comes into the room, they might change their voice or they might just, like, greet everybody. Like, hey, like, all happy. Yeah. But it's like, but that's, that's just, like, I feel from a distance, everyone looks a certain way. Yeah. And, you know, from a distance, you get along with someone a certain way. But when you get to know someone, then things change, you know? Yeah. I like to perceive myself come in, ask myself, and just kind of come in a little bit slower and just creep up later and be like, You're winning, we're going to get along. <laughs> it, yeah. Could you say people doubted you on the way up, starting your business so early at 20, owning the third one about 20, 20? Yeah, for so sure. So if you're 20, fuck, what is that? 20, 2016, how old were you? How old was I? Let's so you're 31, see. 31, that's five, four years late ago? So I about was 26? 26, 27. So yeah. the doubting, how did that go about? Like from day one to then, like how many people or what did you have to like overcome? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're taking me back. <laughs> like, let's take it, it, it back. Was, let's take it back. It was a lot of people, but my main thing is like I don't like to focus on, focus on people or negative stuff. It's yeah. just I feel like it's all a process Facts. as far as like people because I feel like even who they were then, they could not be that now. At the same time as I am too, like whatever I was back then or whatever I felt in, they might have judged judge me on what I felt in. Yeah. And maybe now I'm a better person than that. You get me? Like we're all progressing. We don't. There's Facts. no guide. There's no blueprint. Facts. You just jump. You're doing it, and then you observe yourself and you grow from that. Yeah. So, yeah, I went through a lot of people, bro. I went through a lot of BS, <laughs> but um, I won't point that out. But you, <laughs> you pointed it out uh, probably like the second to last time I got a haircut. Uh, with you um, that a lot of people judge you because now you're living your life when back oh, then yeah. you did mm -hmm. it because yeah. how you said you invested your 20s bro I've had a few people you invested you invested <laughs> your know. 20s and you worked so fucking hard that now you want to live a little bit of your hard earned money and people like they blacklist you yeah Cancel yeah. culture. Oh, yeah, they outcast me. <laughs> they outcast. They well, outcast you. yeah, I just had someone tell me that. Uh, why was I partying now in my thirty ones rather than when I was twelve, <laughs> drinking alcohol, or smoking weed, or having kids? So 
uh, my answer for that is I know that a lot of us grow up fast, and I'm yeah. not judging anyone that has. Yep. I stay in my lane, but I feel like my friend grew up fast, so she was judging me based on her judgment because she grew up fast. So I had to just let her know politely that, you know, you might have expected me to have kids at 13 like you did and party like you did and whatever you did at your age, at that age. But I feel like, and you know, in my lane, I'm doing it the way I want to, the the right way, in, you know, yeah, the way I, f I think the right way is, yeah, which is work hard, take care of your family when your family's taken care of, then you get a party. And if you see me partying now, it's because you know all my bills are paid. I'm yeah. good. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking care of business. <laughs> My business is good. Yeah. My, my family's good. Now I'm going to party. And if that seems childish to you, then I have money to party. So if you don't put money in my pocket, I'm going to do whatever I want with it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, I'm just saying. That's facts. No offense to no. my friend that told me. <laughs> Anything nah, not. but it's, it's how, how it is said. If the shoe fits, fucking wear it, bro. Yeah. Like, if you get offended out, out of what people say, it's like, all right, then you fit that description. Damn. Unfortunately, Fortunately, whatever the case may be. So can you take us through the process of like how it is to open a fucking barbershop? Ooh. What it takes to open a barbershop? Yeah. Damn. So <laughs> when I went into a, when I was younger, I sort of just jumped. Yeah. And that's because I felt like, I felt like I wasn't good at anything. But then you discover what you're good at, obviously. So I was just like, I need to do something with my life. I can't just, my mom didn't come here to the States so that I could just be home watching Pokemon every Saturday and eating <laughs> cereal. So I was like, yo, we're going to make this happen. I'm going to make my mama proud. I'm going to be an architect. So first of all, I didn't even graduate high school. And what the fuck? they sent me to a, a continuation school. And at continuation school, I had a little bit of problems. <laughs> so then I ended up getting jumped and I got kicked out. So when I got kicked out, you see, I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. Facts. And let me tell you what. So I got kicked out. And I went to barber school. I actually went to um, adult school at a different school, which by not being in my comfort zone at my original school, I was able to focus and I graduated. Uh -huh. So I graduated a year later. Then I went to barber school. And the reason I went to barber school was because my dad used to cut his hair at my barber school. So as soon as I walked out the parking lot, knowing that I graduated, I told my mom, yo, so I'm ready. Like, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. Like, I know you... I know I've proved you wrong. Like, I, I failed at <laughs> yeah, everything. Like, I've, I've gave you more debt than anything, but um, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix my problems. I'm going to pick up where I left off, and um, I yeah. told her, I'll, I'll be a lawyer. I'll be an architect. Whatever you want me to be, I'm going to go and do. But she knew her math better than I did, so she was like, you're not even good at math. Why are you going to be an architect? <laughs> she had to tell me straight out. It's like you said, if, you know, honesty yeah. hurts. So Honesty does hurt, bro. Yeah, so you got to say how it is, and I'm glad she said it the way she did. And I was like, really, mom, I want to be a barber? Because I used to cut hair at home, but I never thought I'd be a barber. I didn't see it like as a profession. Yeah. I would just do it for fun because, you know, I would just, you know. Just cut people, cut your homies or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I used to just do maldades in the street, like <laughs> put my art in the street, you know, let people know who I am. But Picasso. that's why she uh, she was just like, yo, why don't you just go to barber school? You cut, you cut hair already. So I was like, I could try it out. And like I told her when I was walking away from that parking lot, I told her, whatever you put me in, I'm not going to look back. And here I am. have never had a job in my life. I don't even know how to make a resume, bro. <laughs> like, I feel slow. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yo, bro, like, I, I'm not normal. <laughs> nah. I was like, I want to be normal. I've even told my clients, like, yo, bro, I want to just work at Walmart. They're not going to pay me what I'm making now, but I'll work for free. Yeah. I just want somebody to scream at me and just, like, tell me what to do. <laughs> Like, I just want to try it out to be normal. But that's why we have Toxicas to scream at us. Yeah, for real. I have a Toxica at home. Hey, so, um, yeah, to open up a shop, I basically, you just jump. I would suggest have a business plan. But <laughs> then again, a lot of people suggest certain things that you should do. There's always, like, a plan that you could follow. So what's your but suggestion? This, my suggestion is just jump. Just make it happen? Just make it Sign happen. At least. Don't know. Just do it fail cry in your room whatever you got to do just provide keep going you know like bro there was a lot of like times i was like damn i can't believe i'm walking in right now and having this meeting with these people these yeah. fools like that are ignorant and i'm just like damn but you just do it you and then you it. overcome it it's just the pressure so now now 11 years after you open your first one how is that like what's your What's the different aspect that you take now, business-wise? 
business wise. Because mm. I, how you said, you may not be good at certain things, but I think running a successful business, which is yourself, you did great at and you're doing great. Mm-hmm. So what's, what's that? Like, what does that look like? What's the difference now? The difference now is that, well, when I owned a business, I realized like really having a barbershop didn't end up being a good business to have. But I was doing it because, you know, you're trying it. You don't know till you try it. Now that I tried it, now I know it wasn't a good business. But not, there is successful barbershops out there. But for me, I feel like I'm more successful just being a barber rather than a barbershop owner. So Mm. that's worked out a lot better for me because, well, first of all, our our industry does not have a structure. Mm. So there's no like do this, do that, put in your this resume, right. put in your form, fill out this, fill out that. A lot of people don't follow the rules. So they can't tell them keep it professional, do not smoke during your break. It's more freelancing and you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah. You could come in naked if you want to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all these people are self employed, so they could do literally whatever they're, they want. They're their own boss. So basically. that's where I won. I won at doing what others failed at so if people if barbers would give you an appointment at 9 a.m and they would show up at 9 45 that's where i would win because i'm gonna be on time yeah you get me so if they want to smoke and leave you in the chair while they go smoke i'm not so i'm gonna win (laughs) so you went out of the people's failures and i feel like that that spreads out through any other industry you know yeah what anybody else is doing whatever someone is failing at you pick up after them and then that's where you become successful because I, I'm a strong believer that if you were out here to uh, fix problems, you, fi- you find a, someone has a problem and you have a solution. You can that, do that's, it. Yeah, exactly. You just come in and that's what creates who you are. Damn. Yep. So now taking that change, your barbering skills took you to some celebrities, to some shows, yeah. to what's like the highest grade celebrity you've cut up or Damn. been in presence of? I've been a, around a few celebrities, actually. Not the ones I wanted to, but yeah, I've been around a few celebrities. Uh, I used to be a Corrupts Barber, official barber, um, Ghostface Killer from Wu-Tang, um, Apple from Black Eyed Peas, um, the Guadalajara team, the soccer team, yeah. Damn, it's like, it's funny because I'm not even like into sports or anything, so I don't even know who they are and stuff, but it's just like other people are all excited for me. <laughs> like, oh, you're nah. like you're there, but, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, damn, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been with Yesel Puig. I've been to his house. It's funny. That's a funny story because uh, I met this this guy. He wasn't even a barber, and that's how easy it is to cut celebrities because I'll probably send in anybody else, anybody's <laughs> chair as long as the haircut's free. Yeah, I would always try to charge for my service though. But I went with this guy, and he actually doesn't cut hair. He didn't own a shaver, a half clip, a razor, <laughs> nothing. So. I'm not trying to make him look bad. You know, I had his back. So I was like, here, fool. there's an extra shaver, razor. We got you. We're going to Yesel Puig's house. And Yesel Puig sat on my, uh, on my chair. And then he's like, oh, cut me up. But I knew that was my homie's moment. That's why we were there. And I was just like, I'm sorry, boss. Like, my boy is the one that wants to cut you up. And I was a little bit faster because he's not a barber. Yeah. So he was getting stuck. He even cut himself in front of Yesel. And I was like, his whole I'll family's there much. right there in the pool. And I'm just like, damn. Bro, like, what are you doing? You're, you're crazy. Yeah. You're crazy because you're not even a barber. You just learned how to cut hair out of his house, and he just said, I'm going. And it's all fu- about connections. Did he fuck up his hair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, yes, I had to say it, bro. Yeah, oh, shit. But that's why when you see them on, on TV and they have messed up haircuts, you know, you know why. why. Yeah, you know why. God damn. So what is, like, if you don't want me asking, what's, like, an, a good amount or average amount that a barber is supposed to make if they're on their shit? Saying like they hmm. they cut up for like 30, 40 bucks. How much are they supposed to make? Yeah. What's an ideal number for a barber? Like so, for them to leave, like, yeah, we did good today. Business wise, you know, free game. Free game. The way, the way I would say about it is like everything is numbers to me. So Facts. we have 12 months in a year, 365 days. We don't work 365 days. We have 52 weeks. So. The way I go about that is like I like to, although barbers work mainly like their weekends are busier. Yeah. But I still like to sum it up into five days, like the days that you would go to school. That's the easiest way for me to project that to you. So we're used to going to school Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. So whatever expenses you have, which is um, your car payment, your rent, food, 
gas a week, sixty dollars, eighty dollars, what it is now, whatever, yeah. hundred. You add it all up per month and you divide it with twenty days. Although you might work twenty one or twenty three days in a month, you want to divide it in twenty days, which means that most barbers pay two hundred a week for booth rent. So if you divide that with five days, like I'm saying, so that's forty days, forty forty dollars that you got to leave a day. Okay. So that's kind of how I go about everything else like everything else like how much i got to make a day how many people do i have to cut up so for example when someone comes out with a product if it's uh like this hair gel and they sell it for six bucks they always tell you they promote to, for you to sell it for double which is 12 bucks and then you got to charge tax on it but i like to think backwards and say well how much did you get it for we all want to find out how much you got it for so i would like to think that if you're selling it to me for six and I'm projecting double, then you got it for three, three. if not less, right? Yeah. Depends on how much, you know, Probably inventory you're, you're making. Yeah. So that's how I go about with my life. If I need to make $300 today for my expenses that I divide in 20 days, then I need to make double that 600 so that I could be a happy man because I like to go to expensive places because <laughs> I grew up broke and now I'm just going to be at expensive places. I'm gonna live my he life. ain't lying. <laughs> he ain't lying. Yeah. You found out. Actually, calm down on that. But you found yeah. out, mom, uh, mama por Dios, yeah, right. la condensa, yeah. 1942 shots. How many 1942s do I have on my shop? Have you counted them? He has a no. whole wall full. <laughs> Jose will tell you he I has bought, a whole. I bought he, all of them, by the way. They were not given. He has a whole wall full of like 1942 bottles. Yeah. But I filled one up with like a uh, Corralejo, so you <laughs> might want to take a shot of that. Yeah, they won't know. They, they, they will not they can't know taste the difference. The difference. <laughs> yeah. So now with so what's like the highest that you've ever got paid in a day? Hmm. Sixteen hundred. Yeah. I did a commercial. I've actually I've I've been part of commercials. Uh. Well, well, you know, as life passes on, everybody transfers to different things. Like celebrities transfer to different barbers. Yeah. Uh, to official barbers, but. I got called by uh, this big promoter on Instagram, Barbershop Connect and Usher's Barber. And they, they're more, uh, they, they have connections to like the, the whole you know, industry. like the whole, like the whole industry, basically people yeah. that do shows and commercials and different stuff like that. So they low key, which is not low key now cause I'm saying it, but low key, they hired me under the table and um, they hired me to do this commercial for track phone. And you would think like, what's track phone? Cause it's not T-Mobile or Verizon. So no. you don't hear about it, but there's a lot of money out there for like, you know, like industries, like anything that has to do with commercials and all that, there's a lot of money. They invest a lot of money. So they paid me under the table to go do a design. And yeah, that was the most I've gotten paid 1600 just to do nothing. I did one haircut and they had me there for two days. I think like eight or 10 hours a day it had to be eight. And then I was just so bored that I started helping them out. Like, hey, what else you guys need? Like, <laughs> it was just, it's in my blood that my, my parents raised me. Like, when you go in somewhere, you politely just, you know. Yeah. Hey, what kind of help? Shake, how can I help you? You know, you got to greet all your uncles and aunts. Even no though matter, you don't want to. No matter if it's a quinceañera and there's 100 people there, you got to go to every table and kiss them on the cheek. You know, but it's like, I walked in and I was just like, dude, I'm bored out of my mind, bro. Like, what do I do? I'm not used to being this bored. So... There was this other lady that was part of the union, and uh, she had to shave down the guys. And I told her, can I help you? Because I'm going crazy right here, <laughs> just sitting down looking at my phone. So yeah. she's like, yeah. And back then, so, like, Instagram wasn't as popping as it is now. Like, you couldn't sell stuff through online. It's not like I could have had, like, an online store to focus on yeah. or anything else. So, yeah, I just helped her out, and she was happy. She pretended she wanted my number, but she never called me. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, okay, I see where we're at. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> nah. What is one piece of advice that you would give the young entrepreneur? Just get up and do it. It's like, <laughs> it's like Nike says, just do it. It's, it's, it's so simple and probably unbelievable, and people could be just like, that's it. That's really all it takes because you might wake up today doubting yourself. You're going to keep overthinking. You're going to keep saying it's not the right time. But the re realistically, it's like, when is the right time? When will you be prepared? When will you have it? You're not. Just do it. And that's Damn. how I come up with that answer. Like, you just got to do it. It's just like, in you, bro. It's cause, in you. Because if I really have to say it, like, I'm just going to say, well, damn, like, 
I'm not good at nothing. I could have just been there like, I'm not good at nothing. I'm not going to do this, kind yeah. of that. I did it. I'm living testament. Literally. You know, I just got up and did it. I did it all wrong, but I did it, you know? And yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is, is doing, becoming a doer, get up and do it and don't overthink it and you will fail. You will fail. And that's the beautiful part of it. I think beautiful the, part of, of life failing. That's what a lot of people. Would, imperfections. That's what a lot of people don't. That's why they don't do it. And that's what they're scared of is because they know they might fail. Yeah. There is a probability of failure with that opportunity. And it's like, well, how do you know you're going to fail if you don't even fucking yeah, do it? it? Yeah. So with the whole this, we kind of briefly talked about it uh, at the haircut, but people that you like mental health, like, do you have you got in tune with your feelings? Do you let yourself feel and shit like that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. How does that? I mean, how does that like play a, a part? Does it not seem like it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing good. We're trained <laughs> that I'm perfect. No, I'm just yeah. Nah, I feel like we all go through stuff. Um, I've never really had a connection with it, anybody, not even my parents. Like I don't really have people to talk to, so I, I've kind of yeah. always been my own consultant. Mm. And that's a little bit hard, bro. It's a little bit steep, and I feel like there's more people out there like that. So, so I think that kind of we can jump into. Someone had a question with like, what's your idea of like self love? Self love? Yeah. Just a lot of people like if you ask them like, nah, bro, I, I don't like who I am, or I'm not too happy. I don't, I don't love think, myself. I don't think uh, me dealing with uh, customer service and having diff different personalities and different people in my chair. And even if I just have to speak for myself, I would like to say that we all want what we don't have. Mm. We all, if you have straight hair, you want curly hair. If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you don't have a beard, you want a beard. Yeah. If you have a beard, you hate your beard because you have to shave it off. And I think that's just life every day. Yeah. You're blessed with certain things and we don't like to look at it Do, for what we you, have. Would you call barbers like therapy? Therapist? Yeah, we're definitely therapists. For the next bro. hour that we're sitting there, we're you are free a therapist. therapist. <laughs> Not free because you charge. Yeah, we charge for the haircut. <laughs> we charge to hear you out. We see your text messages when you're on your phone. <laughs> have, you read, have you read a wild text message? Wild I've one? read, damn, I read a lot of wild text messages. <laughs> and I'm not scared to say it. I'm What's the like, wildest Yo, one you've read? What's the wildest one you've you read? That shit burns. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> damn. Oh. <laughs> Did you tell him something? Nah, it's none of my business, but it was my business because he was on his phone, so it's my business now. <laughs> it's just like, hey, bro, <laughs> you might, you might want to get checked out. <laughs> yeah. So um, with the – I don't know if you already saw it, but this month is Men's Mental Health Awareness. Mm -hmm. How do you take that? Like how do you – do you bring that into your like daily life? You feel like you're a vocalist for it with your whole with your whole career and passion. Like, do you give that type of advice to young guys or guys that you mm -hmm. cut up? I have my own format that I work with, mm. and I don't really like. I said, "Oh, shit," you know. I don't really talk to a lot of people. Like, I talk to a lot of people. Like, a lot of people think I have friends. Yeah. I probably do have a lot of friends, but I'm at work all day, every day, and you know this. Yeah. So it's like to me, it's like my family's my life, and I appreciate all the friendships. But based on that, I'm always concerned about others more than I am about myself. Thanks. Like everybody else comes before me. Like to me, my kids come first and then my clients. Like to me, it's like my clients, I got to be on time. To be honest, like I'm always thinking like, what is my client thinking? Like, is he feeling comfortable? Is yeah. it too cold in here? Is it like, what? what is it? So with that being said, I also think about their mental health. And our, our job as barbers, I believe, yeah. so, you know, someone else might disagree. But then again, 2021, everyone has something to disagree with, right? But yeah. um, my format, like I said, is to boost up their confidence in whatever way I can. Not too corny, but I'll do my part in whatever I could. So with that being said, when they come, you know, I try to do my best. I like to hear them out like a therapist and just see where they're at, where they stand, and then try to lift them up a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of things could change after that. Yeah, and the reason you, you definitely don't. You don't keep the chair quiet. No, I try not to. That would just make it awkward. Imagine an <laughs> awkward haircut, like just all quiet, which yeah. I have been You're before. Over <laughs> You're over there just cutting. Nah, yeah. man, they were just talking about it. Your famous 
your famous phrase when you greet people. So what's up, fool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of um. Do you know how hard it is to deal with like thirty three people a day and have the same energy that you had at six a.m. to have at midnight or whatever it is? Oh right? fuck no! It's like you might not have the same energy you had at two p.m. at eleven p.m. Yeah. You might be down, and it's very important important how you come in and you carry yourself because you're going to transfer that energy to that person in your chair and, and vice versa. Yeah. That person, if they come in with bad energy, which it does happen. You don't as, want those fuckers back. You know, along with the smell. If they smell, <laughs> they leave the smell in the chair. But the energy, it transfers over. So all problems aside, when I come into work, everything is just um, like, you know, standby, invisible, like my life problems. Yeah. Do not come to the chair. Whatever I'm going through, because I go through a lot of shit. I think we all do. But yeah. if I'm yeah. being sued, if I'm doing this, doing that, working on this, it's just like you got no sometimes idea. I talk about it with my clients and I become close with my clients. I like talking about things with my clients. I think my clients would know me best than anybody else, even in my family. I swear, like I'm probably closer to my family than to, to my friend, to my clients than I am to my family. It's because it, it's uh, how they say it, it's like that barbershop talk. Yeah. You're, you're literally sitting in there and you feel that comfort that you're able to talk about certain things. And you know, once you leave, yeah, whoever whoever it was, they could talk about it, whoever they know. But bro, like you just let something right off your chest. Yeah, you you said it. It's and there. It's, it's there, there, and it's not going away <laughs> <laughs> unless you let it out. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, what's uh, from there? Do you have a special holiday? We have holidays coming up. Mm. Do you have a special holiday there that you look forward to? Damn, I like all the holidays because it it calls for a days off. <laughs> You know, it calls for some time off, and I, I love time off, and time off doing nothing feels great. <laughs> if I could sit there and do nothing, I am amazed. I am like, this is life. But is it, is it really, can you do nothing the way you are? Can you no, really bro. sit down and do if nothing? If I do nothing, I fall into depression, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm a doer. When I'm cutting hair, I'm thinking. When I'm driving, I'm thinking. I love listening to music, different things, reading lyrics. I don't read books often, but I read music, <laughs> lyrics and stuff. So, right, you know, some, some, you got to keep your mind busy because, damn, those that time off is the enemy. Some lyrics. They, what's like what's uh, your top three songs right now? Hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of songs, bro. I, don't, I need to go back. Sometimes I like like old songs, too. Like, throw the old songs in there. Damn. I don't know. Some draw know. rule. <laughs> my, my ex has been waiting for this moment. She wants to know. No, I'm just like, <laughs> nah, I can't. I don't know. Not sure, bro. There's a lot of songs. There's, a lot there's of songs? uplifting songs, and then there's like songs what's, for. What's like your? I mean, you obviously play like uh, Farruko in your barbershop, but what's like? Mm. What is in your playlist when you're not in the shop or when you're driving? Mm. Man, mm. those are fucking secretive ass questions. I'm really here to tell my secret. Yeah, huh? you really are. All right, so let's see. To be honest, I forgot the name of the song. That's why I don't even know. <laughs> it's called uh, Amor Foda. By Bad Bunny. That shit's hard. It's deep. Oh, I don't know. We're going to start singing this right now, everybody. We can sing it, bro. We can sing it. <laughs> we going to do this. I'm all, f- all right, all it's right. Like, it's like, it seems like a down song. And even sometimes when I hung around with, hung around with some of my homegirls, they're all like, play amor for They're like, dude, that's depressing. I was like, shit, bro, but that's within my inner self. But back again, like I said, I'm never around anybody. So to me, it's like, it's just me in my car. Yeah. I'm about music, and that's when, you know, I feel like there's certain places where we share with ourselves, like, what we like and yeah. how we feel with our inner selves, which yeah. is, like, your car. Yeah, because if, if you play that in, in, a, in a car. In a barbershop. In a, yeah, in a barbershop or a car, you can't car full of guys. are going to be like, damn, what's up with this fool? <laughs> like, you, you know a, what I'm saying? In a, in a car full of guys, you're going to be like, hey, fool, what the fuck is up with you? Yeah, but the, those are one of the, like most peaceful places is the car yeah. on the drive to work. That's why I like to drive to work like 45 minutes because that's the only time I listen to music or podcast or anything or another place is a restroom. It's a uh, very, pe- very peaceful place. People need me. to like, if you haven't subscribed obviously to the channel, so follow him on IG, but you post like you're driving and cutting up like at six in the morning yeah, all the way to 11, 12, 12 a.m. bro. Yeah. That's on some cycle stuff. Like, yeah, I, it's it's become it's be, 
it's definitely something natural for me to do now, but I could see why people think it's crazy. <laughs> it's not natural. People just like work nine to six, nine to seven. They want to go home and have a life, which, yeah. which is great. You should do that because I don't have a life. So <laughs> I, I want to be like you guys and go home and watch Sons of Anarchy or Squid oh, Game. Sons of Anarchy. You know, We're there, bro. Something. But it's definitely good having a life. I don't recommend doing what I'm doing, but uh, I'm doing what I have to do to get where I have to be. Yep. I'm just saying. <laughs> God damn. Hey, who knew? You got some knowledge on you, I'm, bro. I don't know. You have damn some shit. You're, I didn't you're, know. What's you're up? dropping the mic like 10 times. I'm going to watch this later and be like, that guy knows what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know that guy. I can relate to him. Yeah. So you just started, and I'm going to put you on the spot, and kind of Jose, stupid trainer. <laughs> you just started on your journey yeah. of, again in the fitness. Yeah. Like, why, why are you adding something else into your plate when shit some other people would be like nah you don't need to bro You're yeah good. well you only live once bro and to be honest like i've seen a lot of people pass away and i come to think well like what 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 am i really doing with my life is this really comfort like sitting down and doing nothing like that's what i want to do after work what i really enjoy doing is learning mm. and by making mistakes, you learn. Facts. So I go into the gym not knowing what I what I do, and then you know my gym tra gym trainer Jose. He kind of I like his energy. He's very positive, and the way he carries himself. So the way he shows me like how to do things is different than any other trainer. You know, so it's just it's pretty cool. Just it's more it's more the vibes. Just because he's here, it doesn't mean you gotta lie, bro. Nah, you know, he's that's that guy. <laughs> no, <I'm just> like, <laughs> no, no, but yeah, realistically, no, no, sure. like some people, I don't know. I don't like talking about people, <laughs> but realistically on myself is, um, yeah, I'm just working on myself and realistically it's like, I don't have time to go to the gym, Yeah. but I feel like that's the common answer. So what, what's your, like, um, what's one piece of advice that you would give like a younger version of yourself before going through this change? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't regret nothing. So. Shit. Everything I've been through is just, it's been hell, but I wouldn't yeah. change it. Dang. It's made me who I am today. So, so. What, what's the plan for, what should we be looking at between two to three years? Like, what's your, what's your goal? Well, what's your end goal, bro? What's your it's purpose two. that you think? I have a lot of goals, but, um, well, there's personal goals and then more goals to help others. But I feel like in order to help others, you got to help yourself first. Fact. So I'm not, I'm not good at helping someone else when I have problems on my own. Yeah. So first, I'll start with myself. It's just to provide for my family, get them a home to live in, or just figure out how I'm going to provide a system where it's like own a unit, rent it out, and just be able to provide for the future, which, well, I can't decide now because I can't predict the future. So <laughs> I don't know. Definitely, I don't know if things will change, can. but my goal is definitely like to own either a home or units that I could rent out and do my part as an owner too and make sure everyone's comfortable in my units and where I could provide some type of income while I'm sleeping. And then my goal is not really to give to my kids. It's more to educate them on how I'm doing my process. You get me? Because I could give it to them, but it's just all going to go to the trash. Like if they don't know how to manage it. Yeah. That, yeah. That's really what I've heard. You can give your kids a, a million dollars and that's a lot of money, but if they don't know how to move, then... All that's going to get wasted within a Definitely. year. Less. And I see it now. I buy them Roblox all the time. And they spend it in <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck, bro. You dropped a lot of gems on us. This is your first time doing an actual my, podcast. This is my first time doing a podcast. First time podcast. You have yeah. fucking about 20,000 followers already. Yeah. <laughs> People booking you left and right. So yeah. if, you have, if you don't have a barber and he still has some chair time available, you got to book it now. In a, What was it book like? Book now. How how much how many days do we have left? In the, you said it on Friday. Well, we have like eight Saturdays left. Oh no! Well, we have one Saturday yesterday, so <laughs> we seven. have seven Saturdays left this year, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I yeah. like to look at it in numbers like that because um, I feel like we're all living not a lie, but we're all in our own journey, yeah. and we get focused, we get distracted by life's problems, and it's just like you uh, you forget what it really is. And realistically, we don't have 80 days in a month. We have 30 or 31 or 28. So get up and do something. Stop <laughs> waiting on it. Yeah. <laughs> My drop. Bro, I appreciate you. 
appreciate coming you too, out. Bro. Thank you for making this happen. Let's so go. if you haven't, you gotta stay tuned. You gotta subscribe. If you need a new barber, that's not gonna fuck you up. This is the dude to do it. So I got you. Stay tuned, sir. Sure.